In this video, we're going to have a look at touch screens, which is part of the um, input and output device section of IGCSE computer science. Okay, in most of the input and output devices, you need to understand the principles of operation, uh, the advantages and disadvantages, only advantages and disadvantages if there are several of the same type of device. So for example, if you're looking at um, screens or touch screens, or printers, then because there are different types of printers and touch screens, then you need to compare them for advantages and disadvantages. Whereas if you're looking at something like speakers, where it states that you only need to know about one type of speaker, then you just need to know about principles of operation. Um, in terms of principles of operation, it means how they work. You have to kind of use uh, your common sense and the, the knowledge of the previous exams to try and figure out what level of no, uh, knowledge you need for this, because it's relatively open-ended. but I'm basing what I'm going to tell you on the previous exams that there have been so far and the type of questions they've asked. Um, so, the three types of touchscreen you need to know about are capacitive, resistive, and infrared. Firstly, we've got capacitive. This is the most popular type of touchscreen. Okay, if you've got anything but the most um, cheap um, smartphone or tablet then the chances are it's going to have a capacitive touch screen how they work is they have um, a layer over the display which has an electric current running through it okay um, whenever you touch a part of the um, sort of layer that's got electric current going through it your hu the human body conducts electricity and therefore the electric current is uh, if you like, it's sort of interrupted at a certain point in this. The point at which it's interrupted is sent back to the controller and the CPU and the software acts accordingly. So for example, if you were to put your finger there, it would interrupt the flow of electricity sufficiently because of how the human body conducts amounts of electricity and it would send back the information about where the electricity was interrupted, okay, where the flow of electric was interrupted. Uh, the good thing about these touchscreens is that they are extremely durable when you compare them to resistive touchscreens. They also quite easily support multi-touch. When we say multi-touch, we mean um, pressing several of your fingers on the screen at the same time, okay? So, for example, when you're doing a pinch zoom or if you're playing any games or if you've got a piece of software that supports multi-touch then it's very easy to use on these they're also very accurate when you compare them to um, resistive the negatives are that they're expensive to manufacture okay that's why it used to be that the pretty much anything below a certain price point was always resistive but now um, I'm recording this in 2017 I'm sure it will be even more in the future that more and more things are capacitive and resistive is phased out. But at the moment, they are more expensive to manufacture than uh, resistive. Remember that manufacture word because we can't just say more expensive because that's obviously relative to the store. But generally to manufacture is, well, it's more of an absolute uh, because of the price of raw materials. Okay, so when we say expense, if you say it's expensive or it's more expensive, generally you won't get the mark. You've got to say expensive to manufacture. There's always a line underneath manufacture in the mark scheme because they are expensive to, manufa to manufacture, but I could obviously sell one of these for five euros or a thousand euros, but the manufacturing cost is relatively steady. Uh, the other negative is that they can't be used with gloves, at least not standard gloves, because a glove covers your fingers and the material that most gloves are made of doesn't conduct electricity, then it doesn't interrupt the electric flow sufficiently to send the message back. You can get special gloves, however, that you can wear um, to use these. Next, we've got resistive. How resistive works is it's got two layers. Okay, the first layer, the one that is on top, and the one which you touch with your finger is slightly flexible. It's much more simple than capacitive in the way that when you press the first layer, when it touches the second layer, the second layer, the, the, it, it detects where that has been touched. Okay, So it detects where those two things have touched together. So if you ever touch a resistive touchscreen, and they're often used in uh, classroom smart boards, or interactive whiteboard, smartboard is a brand, 
Uh, in interactive whiteboards, they're often used because they are cheaper to manufacture um, and you don't generally need multi-touch um, or particular accuracy in a smart board because they're so big. So they often use resistive touch screens. You'll tell if you put your finger on it, you can feel that something pushes back and then it stops. Okay, and that's the first layer touching the second layer. And where it touches, it detects that, sends it back to the CPU and acts accordingly. Um, they are cheaper to manufacture. However, they are less durable. They, they are easier to break. Uh, it's a bit of a, that's what they say in the exam. Obviously, if you drop a resistive um, screen from a height, I think that with a cheaper capacitive screen, there's possibly less chance that it's going to crack. But now with more expensive um, capacitive screens, we've got things like Gorilla Glass, which are extremely durable. These are said to be less durable, okay? Uh, they are easier to malfunction by having areas that just end up sticking down permanently. Uh, there's less multi-touch support, although it is possible to build them with multi-touch support, they often don't have it. Um, one of the reasons it's got less multi-touch support, we'd say, is because if you put your finger here and here, the chances are it's going to push down that area, that area, and all the space in between. So it's not going to tell that there is a gap between because obviously you push your fingers down on the material and because the material isn't completely flexible, uh, then it pushes down the area in between as well. They are also slightly less accurate than capacitive touchscreens, but obviously that's why they're used on these massive um, interactive whiteboards in classrooms because you don't necessarily need that level of accuracy. Finally, we've got infrared touchscreens. Uh, there are two types of infrared touchscreen that you need to know about, optical and thermal. With optical, they fire infrared uh, sort of lines across the screen, okay? Up and down and left and right. And there are lots and lots and lots of these grid lines. And when your finger touches the screen, it interrupts the grid lines. So the receiver on one end doesn't receive the uh, signal and therefore it knows it's been broken. So we know the this one here has been broken. And then it measures it downwards as well. And the sender here and the receiver here. The receiver here says it doesn't uh, receive it. And therefore it must have been broken at this little cross section here. Um, the, op the optical ones generally, again, you're looking at things like interactive whiteboards. If you've ever seen an interactive whiteboard where they've got two sort of uh, triangular corners on them that stick out a little bit, um, or four triangular corners, and that's because it's sending a, a beam, it's sending a signal across the board, okay? And then when you put your finger on the board, it detects that that signal has been broken. Uh, you can't really do that very well with a phone because you would need something to stick out on the sides to send this beam across. Okay, and therefore it's less likely to be used in things like phones and tablets. There is also the uh, thermal version, uh, which is a bit newer, and it detects the heat from the human hand. Okay, because obviously hands give off some form of heat that is different from the background heat, and therefore it detects that that heat has been um, is in a specific place on the board. Also, you can buy uh, things now to turn pretty much anything into a into a touch screen just by layering something on top of it that detects heat okay so you can you can pretty much just use a single layer you can buy a single layer instead of the entire screen for a thermal infrared touch screen um, in terms of advantages and disadvantages they are expensive to manufacture both of these and the grid one isn't really as usable on a flat surface okay um, the expense manufacturer is the reason that we don't really see the optical uh, sorry, the thermal touchscreen in smartphones and tablets widely at the moment, and we still use capacitive screens. 